today I'm with Dr. Emma. Good morning. Good morning. Um, and we're going to be talking about something that's very topical in the press right now, acne and antibiotic resistance. Du -du -du. Right, well, everyone always worries if you I do know. suggest a course on antibiotics, you get these horrified looks. Um, and I think it's really important to clear up this issue because it is something that we have as a tool for using in acne, in rosacea, um, and we want to use them because sometimes they are helpful. So we, we want to talk today about how to use them safely, when's appropriate to use them, and the sorts of problems that you can get. So what do you think? Do you still use acne for antibi uh, antibiotics for acne? I use them quite a lot because I think, you know, by definition, we see people who are often at the more end, severe end of the spectrum. Um, so anyone who's got called moderate to severe um, acne is certainly a candidate for them, and I'll often discuss the pros and cons of that with them. But I think it's clear that we establish boundaries when, when we're doing it. So for me, the first reason to do it is that person in front of me is suffering. We want to get them under control. And we know that um, whilst good skincare is the cornerstone of good acne management, it takes time. It, does. it takes a process of getting used to those sorts of ingredients and sometimes it gets worse before it gets better, not uncommonly um, when you start to use a retinoid. So for all those reasons you want to limit the amount of inflammation in the skin which is going to cause dark marks and maybe even scarring as quickly as possible. So antibiotics are great for that. I call them the stabilizers on the bike until you learn to ride and then they come off. It's a good analogy. Yeah. I, I completely agree. I tend to use them at the beginning of a cream-based regime, like you say, just to sort of settle things down. And I call that my induction phase. Okay. And then I switch to my maintenance phase. Because acne is a journey. It's about trying to, to make sure that you get on a regime that's sustainable and continue to improve your skin. So I, I think it's that time frame, isn't it? The problem is that people have often been left on them for some years on end. Yeah. And that is absolutely not good treatment. No, um, that's true. And I think then become very insecure at the prospect of coming off them. So that brings us on to the next point. Um, they should never be used as monotherapy on never. their own. That's just not correct. Um, I think it's always a holding measure, um, especially if the disease is more widespread and it involves the chest and the back. It is a good way to get control mm. relatively quickly. But we're always talking about combining them with retinoids and topicals like benzoyl peroxide. Um, because so if think, you yeah. don't, if you don't combine them with something, you're only treating part of the issue with acne. So yeah. antibiotics are acting as anti-inflammatories, are calming things down. But what they're not targeting is the underlying issue with the pore blockage. No, sure. um, so actually, you need other treatments like retinoids or benzoyl peroxide to actually unblock the pores and affect the oil production. So there's just it just doesn't make sense from a sort of biological perspective to use antibiotics by themselves. So we don't. We don't. No, um, and you definitely get a more potent effect when you multitask. If you combine yes. um, influencers at different points in the acne pathway, you do get better results all round. Much better. Um, and I think, I mean, for me, my process is always to see them again at three months, and depending on how they've gone with their topicals, to consider possibly a six month course. But at that's the point in time, if we're really not winning, but I will say, okay, enough now, and we need to consider other. Um, either stronger or more kind of um, long-lasting options, whether it's agree. hormonal uh, manipulation with the contraceptive pill or antiandrogens yes. or Accutane. So that's my kind of process, and I let Definitely. them know that at the beginning so they're clear we're not leaving you on no. these antibiotics long-term. No. So definitely at six months is a really good time maximum six months to really reassess because if you're having to use it for much longer you're probably not on the right treatment. Yeah. So no more than three to six months. Um, not using them by themselves. Yep. I always advise people on probiotics with them because actually it's really important to try and make sure that we are balancing out the sort of bacterial flora within your body and making sure that the balance is just right. So good probiotics with them as well. Yeah, and I think it reduces side effects yep. that are common like thrush and gut irritation. Yes, exactly. Um, and, and knowing as well that when you stop them, people often worry about resistance, the bacteria getting resistant to them. The thing about the antibiotics that we use in acne, we use them at quite low doses, so we're actually not using them as high as if you were to have something like a chest infection, and we're only using them for a relatively short period of time, and so when you stop them, your bacteria will start to become sensitive again. Hmm. So I think there are good reasons to use antibiotics in acne, yeah. but the rules. So there you have it, our take on when to use oral antibiotics in acne, the fact that we think it's okay 
but that it should only be used in the right setting and for the right time in the right individual. Hope that was useful. See you again soon. Bye.